A long time ago there was nothing. A little bit more recently than a long time ago there was land. And some people walked to it. Over this here land bridge. Then the ocean got bigger and this here land bridge went night night. <coughs> now these people are stuck. What are they gonna do? They don't know, but they have some logical ideas about how people want to live, so they build a society. Well, now that we have a society, let's give it a name. What would you like to name yourselves? Protonative Americans. Clovis. Okay cool. But how long can you last? Oh fuck what just happened? Oh. All the animals died, and Clovis realized they needed those animals to survive, and they couldn't be bothered to get off their lazy asses and move. So they're a different culture now. Got it. So who's here now? The Folsom culture. Is that it? No, the Mississippians are here too. Guess where they are? Mississippi. Yes. Texas. Also yes. And they are spreading round the country to these places. Did you two do anything notable? Yes. We discovered agriculture. Just now. Wow get with the program. So what's gonna happen to these guys? Nothing probably. Oh no. The temperatures are dropping, and the corn is dying. <coughs> Can we ask for help? Not really. All we have, are these other guys, that we befriended for some reason. Is there anyone else in America, that we can go to? No, but guess who just dropped in Puerto Rico? Christopher Columbus. And he's coming for us. What are we gonna do? Nothing apparently. Just let him kill away. Okay, I guess. Meanwhile, the Spanish are down in Florida establishing their own settlements, including New Mexico, because the old Mexico wasn't good enough. And look. There's the French, they're right by you guys, establishing their settlements, but you're not gonna get to see that, because Chris Columbus is brutally murdering you guys, and there's England, who finally made it to America. They just established Jamestown, with the promise that the colonists would have the same rights as the English folks back in England. And America agreed. What about the lost no? We don't talk about that. So, everyone's here. How are the Native Americans? They're mad. And they want war, but they also still wanna keep it cool, because they know, if they only fight they will both die. <coughs> Was that logic any good? Not really, they still died, while Europe was busy colonizing America. How's England doing? Looks like they have the entire east coast in their hands. Except Florida, which Spain got dubs on already. And how many people live here now? Enough to govern ourselves, they said. And now Massachusetts and Connecticut have documents to prove it. And Virginia just made a legislative assembly. The colonies have their governments, but they are still throwing a hissy fit about doing work, so they want slaves. But all the natives are dead. <coughs> Who do we use? The Africans. And now the use of African slaves is so popular there's a trade route now. But what if my slaves die? <coughs> what do I do? Don't worry about that just yet, they're hauling out better treatment for the slaves, so they stop dying. <coughs> Britain doesn't seem too bothered by having slaves in America, but some of the colonies do. They argue about the moral and religious implications of slavery. How many of them will be using slaves by the 18th century? All of them. So the colonies and their governments are okay with this. Speaking of, how's the government doing? Seems like they're holding up. And they are going to be needed very badly the more people immigrate to the colonies. So they are doing okay. Let's check back in with the French over by the Mississippi River. They've been getting into some conflict with Britain about Ohio. How long does this take to resolve? It takes seven years. They fight and they fight and they fight, and then they realize fighting is wrong, so they sign a peace treaty with the French. It says that Britain won. And even though they won, they still keep their soldiers in America. Huh. Wonder if that'll lead to any problems. But guess who's broke? Also Britain. They kinda need their money, so how are they gonna get that money? Let's look at the list. Who does Britain have power over? Oh yeah. America. We haven't taxed them in a long time. How about we tax them the biggest taxes they've ever seen? Want to use paper? Or anything made of paper? 
you need a stamp, which costs money. The colonists get angry, so Britain says okay, we'll remove this. But how about this? Want to sell sugar? You need a note saying that you have clearance to sell the sugar, and you also will be taking the risk of that note getting destroyed along the way, leading to possible death. Okay, the colonists are getting real angry in this point, so. Britain says okay, we'll remove every act. Except for tea. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tea. But tea. So these guys, dress up like the Native Americans, who are probably dead at this point, <coughs> and they throw all the tea into the harbor. Guess what? Britain got a front row seat to that production, and they got real mad, so they created brand new acts just for Boston. What the fuck, said the colonists. We ain't putting up with that shit. You said we'd have the same rights as those guys back in England. The Americans were so fed up with Britain's contradictory behavior they hold the Continental Congress, aka a super secret staff meeting, and they drew up the Declaration of Rights, which is just your regular old timey Yelp review. They also had these guys on the side, who were ready to battle in case Britain ignored their Yelp review. But how are we gonna train these guys to be ready in a minute? Contraband. They stole weapons. They're so sneaky. Or are they? Because someone ratted them out, and they got found out immediately. Now they are in trouble. So Paul Revere warns everyone the British are coming. The British are coming. The British soldiers reach Lexington first, where they are ambushed by a group of minutemen. Sounds small, but this was a very important battle. The shot heard round the world started many revolutions. But more importantly, the American Revolution. When the British got to Concord, they didn't find any illegal weapons. They decided to head back to Boston, but when they turned to leave, nearly 4,000 Minutemen had assembled. The British were decimated. And now the colonists are bitter enemies with Britain. Hey. Remember that super secret staff meeting? They decide to have another one. This time, the topic at hand, independence, or forgiveness, some guy in England, said hey. Americans. I see you. You're doing it wrong. Britain doesn't want to forgive you, so it's pointless to even ask in the first place. Just become independent guys. The Continental Congress says you know what? That guy might have been right. So they elect this guy named Thomas Jefferson to write the Declaration of Independence. Now the war is definitely about independence instead of being equal to Englishmen. But in order to fight, America needs an official army. So the Continental Congress decides George Washington should be head of the Minutemen. Now known by the much more professional name, the Continental Army. Even though the Continental Congress had now decided the war was about independence, some people still wanted to be friends with England for some reason. The British, obviously, were very annoyed that America was going to war with England, so they seized New York City to make the colonists stop being annoying. The Continental Army tried to fight back, but they sucked at their job, so they lost that fight. Washington took his legendary journey over Delaware. Then, on Christmas Washington decided to send his men into a garrison in New Jersey and kill everyone in their sleep. I guess everything really is legal in New Jersey. While this was happening, one American general defeated a group of British soldiers at Saratoga, completely by accident. Yay. This turned out to be one of the most important events of the war. Wanna know why? The French, hon hon hon, were on the fence about whether or not they should help the Americans, and this victory sealed the deal. The French decided to help the Americans. Yay. During this battle, Washington and his soldiers were starving in Valley Forge. Let's hope they don't die. <coughs> After a couple months of starving to death, some foreign dudes came to help fund and train the Continental Army. The British captured Charlestown, South Carolina. From there they were led to Yorktown, Virginia. After Lafayette and Washington found out the British were in Yorktown, they moved their armies there too. After a good long while of fighting, night and day, on land and on sea, the British finally surrendered. Yay. Then, they signed Treaty of Paris No. 5872. 
now we have a couple extra states and we are free. Now America's free, and the super secret staff has to convince everyone to become a unified country. Luckily, they do. Most people here like the idea of a republic, so that's what they went with. In order to govern, the super secret staff established the Articles of Confederation, which is a really 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 shitty prototype of the Constitution. Wanna know why it was so shitty? It was almost impossible to make changes, and there was no president to enforce the laws. The only thing it did well was establish the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. This ordinance effectively annexed the estates. The event that really showed the writing on the wall for those articles was Shays's rebellion. Daniel Shays led a protest about higher taxes, saying that he and his followers did not like them, because why would they? Because the government under the Articles of Confederation didn't have a way to enforce the laws, the rebellion got out of control and everyone realized that a better form of government was needed. So Americans did what Americans do best. They call another staff meeting. This one was called the Constitutional Convention, where they convened about the Constitution. Go figure. A lot of conflicts arose between Federalists and Anti-Federalists. Big states and small states, North versus South. Those from the big states and the small states argued over how people should be represented in government. People from the big states said it should be counted by population, meaning for example, you have one delegate for every 100 people. The small states argued that the amount of delegates should be standardized, so every state gets the same amount of delegates, no matter the population. The Federalists and Anti-Federalists argued over how much power the federal government should have. The Federalists liked the idea of a balance between federal and state power. The Anti-Federalists didn't like this idea, and therefore opposed the Constitution. The North and the South argued about whether slaves should be counted when deciding how many delegates a state gets. The answers to their problems were these solutions. The reason why the Constitution was better than the Articles of Confederation is because it finally had an executive and judicial branch, introducing checks and balances, and a way to effectively change itself down the line. So now we get to choose a president. Remember George Washington? Remember how great he was? Remember how he almost starved to death? <coughs> yeah, let's choose him. Hey George, said James Madison and Henry Knox. You should become president. But I don't want to become president, said George. You should become president, they said again, holding a gun in their hands. So now George Washington is president. He chooses the first ever presidential cabinet, consisting of the following people. Pay attention to these two, because they are about to inspire centuries of political hate. Yay. They will establish the first political parties later, even though George Washington told them not to. By the way, these guys now call themselves Democratic Republicans. Just thought you should know. Now the Constitution was really put to the test. There was another rebellion over a tax on whiskey. People didn't like it, because people want to drink their alcohol goddammit. Washington quickly put the rebellion down proving that the Constitution could kick the Articles of Confederation's ass. You thought that Britain and France were at peace? No. They are fighting again. Which side of the war should we support? Britain, said Hamilton. France, said Jefferson. Neither, said Washington, and he's the president, so the debate was over, and they didn't get involved. Good call. Maybe some people will remember this moment in the future. Some people realized that George Washington was kicking ass as a president, so they thought he should be king. You should be king, they said. No said Washington. You should be king, they said, this time with a gun. No, I'm stepping down from being president. I can't do this forever, guys. George Washington decided to step down from being president. Now, there's a new problem. Opposing parties on the political stage. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson are facing off to see who will be president and who will be vice. And John Adams won, so he's the president. Guess who's at war again? France. With who? Us. Oh shit. Why us? 
Well, remember how they helped us win the war. Well, we also said that we'd protect their colonies in the Caribbean. Yeah, well. Guess who forgot about that? Us. Fuck. Now France is holding it over our head and wants to go to war because we didn't hold up our end of the deal. John Adams, looking back at Washington's neutrality sent three delegates to negotiate a solution with France. Instead, France sent three of their delegates to demand payment for violating the agreement. This event became known as the XYZ affair because the French delegates were called X, Y, and Z. Apparently they were obsessed with the alphabet. The Federalists wanted to go to war, but John Adams still said no, like Washington. Even though the Democratic Republicans agreed with John Adams' decision to not go to war, they still didn't like him for other reasons. Now everyone hates John Adams. Well John Adams doesn't like the fact that nobody likes John Adams. So he passed a law under the Alien and Sedition Act saying that anyone who spread rumors about the government would go to jail. This obviously made Jefferson and his followers really mad. He told John Adams, hey. Us over here from Virginia and our best is over in Kentucky aren't really a big fan of that law saying we can't talk shit about you. So we are gonna ignore it. They ignored it through a process called nullification. John Adams got so fed up with people hating him that he decided to step down after only one term. Time for another election. This time the candidates are Thomas Jefferson versus Aaron Burr. Who won? No one. It was a tie. But we can't have that. What should we do? I know, said Alexander Hamilton. Persuade everyone to cast blank ballots. So now who won? Jefferson, by two votes. Congress passed an amendment saying they don't want any more ties. The current law states the runner-up will be vice president, so Aaron Burr is the vice president. Wow that sucks, said Jefferson. How about we change that? Now every candidate gets to choose their vice president. Jefferson didn't like Hamilton's idea of having a big and strong government, so he made it less big and strong. He also reduced the influence of the Bank of the United States. Remember how John Adams' presidency was a disaster and he stepped down? Well, before he left, he tried to fill federal judge positions with federal lists, but the paperwork hadn't been finalized until after Adams left office. Now Jefferson's like, this paperwork shouldn't be valid, since I was president, when it was finished, and I didn't approve of this message. So Jefferson told Madison not to deliver the paperwork. Then they went to court. The Supreme Court. Where they argued if the paperwork should be valid or not. An important dude named John Marshall said the part of the Constitution that would make this paper valid is unconstitutional, thereby introducing judicial review, so the Supreme Court can say stuff is unconstitutional now. Remember the French? They're at war again. With us? No. With themselves. And the rest of Europe. And Napoleon, the leader of France, is so busy fighting his own war that he can't pay attention to his colonies. So he sells them to Jefferson. He buys them immediately for the low low price of 15 million dollars. The funner thing is, Thomas Jefferson told Hamilton that if it's not in the Constitution, you can't do it. He conveniently forgets that buying territory is not outlined in the Constitution. Hypocrite. Then he hired these two dudes, Lewis and Clark, to go on an expedition with Sir Cajoli to explore the new territory they just acquired. Time for another election. This time it's Jefferson versus this guy. Can you guess who won? You're right. It's Jefferson. You'd think that his second term would go, just as well as his first, but it ended up being a shit show, namely because your favorite two enemies are fighting again. Britain and France. And it's threatening American shipping. Thomas Jefferson just shit his pants. And now he's freaking out. Americans were mostly mad at Britain, because Britain was seizing Americans at sea and forcing them to join the British side. Not cool. Because Britain was stealing our soldiers, Jefferson told everyone that they are not allowed to buy or trade any old shit from Britain. And everyone got outraged, but Jefferson told them to suck it up. 
This sparked the beginning of industrialism in America. Yay. By the way, who's the Secretary of State? James Madison. He wants to run for president. I wonder if that'll spark a trend. Time for another election. This time it's James Madison versus the same guy. Well, he didn't win the first time. Is he going to win this time? Nope. So James Madison is the president. His presidency was very much overshadowed by the War of 1812. Guess when it happened? Beats me. During Madison's terms, the national anthem was written, but it's not the national anthem just yet. The War of 1812 officially ended after the British burned down the White House and signed the Treaty of Ghent. At least it's not another Treaty of Paris. Because news traveled so slowly at this time, because nobody bothered to check their phones, one last battle was fought before the news of the treaty reached New Orleans. American General Andrew Jackson won a decisive victory. Before the wars ended, there was a convention. In Hartford. Called the Hartford Convention. At this convention, the Federalists discussed how they wanted to make peace with Britain, because they really wanted to resume trade with Britain instead of being at war with them. Everyone else saw this meeting as a treacherous act by the Federalist Party, ensuring the end of their party. So now all that's left is the Democratic Republicans. Because the Americans didn't win or lose any territory in this battle with Britain, it confirmed their status as an independent nation. Another election. Who are the candidates? Two new guys. James Monroe and Rufus King. James Monroe was Secretary of State, just like James Madison. Where did Madison end up again? Oh yeah, he was president. So James Monroe is president. Remember how Spain had dibs on Florida this whole time? We bought Florida from them, so now we have dibs on it. Missouri wants to become a state, but Congress is like no no, you can't become a state yet, no one else wants to. So Missouri waits until Maine wants to become a state before he lying. And it works. So now that Missouri is a state, Congress need to lay down some ground rules in America. The rules are as follows, any territory that wants to become a state north of this line, has to be a free state, and anything south has to be a slave state. Wonder if that'll affect anything in the future. John Quincy Adams writes a doctrine telling Europe they can't make any new colonies or America will fuck with them. Election time. Who are the candidates? John Quincy Adams and Andrew Jackson. But I wanna be president, says Henry Clay, an important war hero. I might be able to help you out said John Quincy Adams. So they strike a bargain. A corrupt bargain. It says that, if Henry Clay votes for John Quincy Adams, then Adams would make Clay his secretary of state. Therefore setting him up for presidency. Jackson ends up winning the popular vote, but don't forget about the Electoral College. Adams ended up winning, because of the Electoral College. Wonder if the same outcome will happen later. Election time. Who are the candidates? Adams and Jackson. Again. Yes. But Jackson wins this time, because a law saying that you don't have to own land to vote was passed. Jackson was the first Democrat. He based his ideals based off Thomas Jefferson's ideals. But Thomas Jefferson is dead, so it's not completely accurate. He didn't like the people that were working with him in Congress, so he replaced all of them with his besties. Congress told the Native Americans to go west of the Mississippi River. Most of them said fine, we go, but the Cherokee said fuck you, we were here first. So they sued the state of Georgia. Eventually it made its way all the way up to the Supreme Court, and John Marshall said you know what? You can stay. So now everyone's happy. Except Andrew Jackson. He said fuck you John Marshall, I'm kicking them out anyway. So Jackson's getting his way and he's using the veto more than any other president. Remember the dead Federalist Party? <coughs> Their descendants reinvented themselves, and are now called the Whig Party. They made fun of Andrew Jackson, by calling him King Andrew. Jackson really cared for the common folk, and therefore hated rich people and anything associated with them. Namely, the Bank of the United States. 
he hated it so much, that he destroyed it. A lot of people were mad, that he killed the bank of the US, and it may have accidentally started the panic of 1837. Election time. Who won? Martin Van Buren. A good friend of Andrew Jackson, he was a Democrat, and won because of Jackson's support. Unfortunately, his presidency was killed by the Panic of 1837. More than one third of the population was out of work and they nicknamed him Martin Van Ruin because they blamed him for ruining the economy. It was actually Jackson, but don't worry about it. By the way, this guy made this really important invention called the cotton gin making slavery really fucking profitable. Election time. Who won? William Hare. Arthur. He's dead. Who will become president now? His vice president, John Tyler. Remember how Spain controlled this part of America? Now it's Mexico. But this part of Mexico doesn't want to be part of Mexico, and America wants them to be a part of their country. So they ask Texas. Hey Texas. Wanna be a part of our account? Wait no we shouldn't ask that. Texas became their own country for a few years, before they were allowed into the Union. America decided that it's their God-given right to stretch from sea to shining sea. Next step, acquire Oregon. But wait, Britain already owns Oregon. But so do we. Let's fino. That would be bad. Let's compromise and divide the territory here. Final step, acquire the rest of this area, but Mexico owns that. How do we get it from them? Provoke them into war. Yay. Some dude named Sutter discovered gold in his mill. Now everyone wants to go to California. But there's no easy way to get there. So they either go around, through Panama, or overland. Spoiler alert, most people died before they got there. <coughs> Whoops more natives are dying due to the white folks in California. <coughs> By the way, this really important canal was just finished, connecting the Atlantic Ocean to the Midwest. This'll be great for the economy. A lot of people have started inventing stuff. Like this guy. And these guys. Hey. Remember slavery? Let's see everyone's opinion now. In the north, they don't use slaves, because they manufacture stuff more than they use farms. But in the south, they do have farms, and they are also lazy. So slaves for them. Yay. The North and the South have been fighting in Congress about this, so they came to the Compromise of 1850. It says the North gets free California. Yay. It also says the South gets this new law saying they can point at any black person and say it's their slave. And everyone will believe them. That basically makes this woman's work pointless. Kansas and Nebraska want to become states. Congress said okay. And they were too lazy to decide if they should be a slave state or a free state, so they said you can decide. The people living in the north saw that they were above the 49th parallel and said what? That's bullshit. They're above this line. They can't be a slave state, and Congress said well. Not my problem. So a bunch of the northerners went to Kansas and Nebraska and voted. Way too many times. And they also murdered people just because they didn't want them to be slave states. But then the northerners realized that Congress had done away with the Missouri Compromise just about two seconds before they let these new states roll in. So, I guess they are okay now? Sure. Suddenly, some people wanted to get rid of slavery. But how? The abolitionists wanted to get rid of it by passing laws. Nah, 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 said the Free Soilers. They were fine with it, but they didn't want it to get even more out of control than it had already gone. By the way, remember these guys, they call them Republicans now. Just thought you should know. Now it's time to talk about the most infamous Supreme Court case in the history of the United States. This guy was a slave. And his slave master took him to a free state. Now he's free, right? Wrong, apparently. When the master wanted to go back to the slave state, he told Dred Scott to come with him. What the fuck? No. I'm free now. I'm not going with you. Is this legal? Let's find out. 
And so Dred Scott took his slave master to court. And it went to every court, until it reached the Supreme Court. This bitch was one of the judges. He said, Mr. Scott. You are a piece of property with no rights. You should not have been able to take your master to court. No matter what state you go to, you cannot be freed. Good day sir. Everybody in the north was more outraged than they were about Nebraska. Election time. Who's running? This former senator of Illinois is running against this guy. This time, Honest Abe is representing the Republican Party, making him the Republican. Abe Lincoln won, and as soon as the South figured out that he won, nearly all of them left the US Union. Here are the ones that didn't leave. So now the Civil War has officially begun, overshadowing Lincoln's entire presidency. Those southern states that are no longer part of the US call themselves the Confederate States of America now. And this guy is their president. The first battle of the Civil War happened at Fort Sumter in Virginia. When the North heard about the Civil War, they decided this sounds fun, why don't we join? The Union devised an amazing three-part plan. Part 1, Blockade Southern Ports. They can't import or export anything. Part 2, Union riverboats will split the Confederacy in two. Part 3, Union armies will capture Richmond, Virginia. The next battle was the Battle of Bull Run. The South won. This battle was very close to Washington DC and the North got lucky that the South was tired and didn't want to fight by the time they got there. The bloodiest battle of the war was fought near a creek called Antietam. The North won. Lincoln just issued this new document that freed the slaves. He technically shouldn't have been allowed to, but he could, since he was the commander-in-chief, which allowed him to seize enemy resources. Those resources being slaves. So now the slaves are free. It leads to social upheaval and political unrest. Let's pause for a moment. See this lady. She's an important lady. She was a Civil War nurse and went on to found the American Red Cross. Back to your regularly scheduled war. Abraham Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania after a very decisive battle. Then some southern dudes went batshit insane and started destroying everything in the north because they wanted to protect the southerners bill. Then Lincoln was like oh fuck. So when southern troops conquered Richmond, the southern dudes and the northern dudes came to a compromise at Appomattox Courthouse. The south surrendered and the north won the war. The South should have been able to win the Civil War, because they had better soldiers and better generals, and they were fighting on their home turf. But the North ended up winning, because they were faster than the South at everything, and would ultimately win anyway, if the war went on. By the way, the federal government has a lot more power over individual citizens now. Hey. Remember the Emancipation Proclamation? Remember how it freed some slaves? Well, it only freed slaves over confederate lines, and not any slaves in the border. This is a problem, so Congress decided to pass the 13th Amendment. It states neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States. Notice how it says, except as a punishment. Wonder if that'll lead to anything bad. Election time. Who won? Abraham Lincoln or fuck he's dead too. His vice president Andrew Johnson, who nobody liked, became president. Also, because of the 13th amendment, now there are 4 million unslaves who don't know what to do. Remember those loopholes? They now come in the form of black codes. If you are now a freed slave and you don't have a house or a job, then you can be arrested and become re-enslaved. Yay. A lot of freed slaves found work through sharecropping, which is basically slavery plus. Some white folks who were not okay with the Emancipation Proclamation made a ghost club. This group was made up of mostly democratic extremists. During this period of reconstruction, soldiers from the north were sent to the south to make sure people were not hurting black people or breaking laws made to protect them. By the way, if you were a general fighting in the South during the Civil War, you can't vote. Yay. 
Also, this thing called the Freedmen's Bureau was established to make sure that newly freed black people are able to live in good conditions. The newly freed slaves are now citizens, and can vote. Black senators, congressmen, and mayors were elected, and they were all Republicans. More angry southern white people. They were mad that black people could vote, so they designed stupidly ridiculous tests that no single person could ever pass. Another stupid rule, if your grandfather was a slave, then no voting for you. Boohoo. The Reconstruction ended with the Compromise of 1877, which stated that the Democrats would let the Republicans win the election, if they removed the northern troops from the south. Some other southern people designed these new laws, that say black people can't be in the same place as white people. Yay. But that sounds illegal, you might say. Well, you're wrong. Because in 1896, the Supreme Court made its second worst decision in the history of American history. Plessy v. Ferguson. This Supreme Court case decision said, you can keep the people separated, as long as everything is equal. This coined the phrase, separate, but equal. Next up, the Industrial Revolution. What's happening? Everything is getting more industrial. Some guys in England were like, what if we made everything with machines, and we put those machines in bagrooms called factories? Also, what if we just didn't tell anyone? And everyone was very okay with this. One guy was like yes I will not tell anyone about this. And then he went, and told the entire fucking country of the United States. More people have jobs now, and more people are coming to take the jobs, and now there's overpopulation. Most of these people, that are new to America, are coming from Eastern and Southern Europe. This one guy was like I wanna make cars, and I want to make them really fast. So why don't I have all of these guys stand in a line and each guy will have one part of the car. We lad his part after the guy before him. And we'll call it an assembly line. Things will get done much faster this way. And so it did. And now everyone has a Model T Ford. Don't go in the street, you might die now. Everything is mass produced. So it's all a lot cheaper now. Poorer people can get the things they want now. This one guy was like everything looks so pretty, it looks like we are skyrocketing towards success. But on the inside, everyone is literally dying. There's shit in the streets, and there's overpopulation. Corruption. Unsanitary water. Tenements. Political machines. What are they? Terrible. Big companies would lure poor people and immigrants into their scheme by promising them food, a house, and a job, but at one tiny, baby, little cost. You must vote for their political party or else they will fucking murder you. This led to many corrupt presidents and mayors. There was a lot of voter fraud, but who cares? Everyone is happy. This guy ran a political machine called Tammany Hall, which was the biggest political machine in the history of political machines. BTW, there was a group called Populist Party. They were a group of farmers that wanted to have better working conditions, a direct election of senators, shorter working hours, and pensions, among other things. They ran in one election, and they promoted this lawyer named William Jennings Bryan. He lost, and then the party went night-night. <coughs> There's a new era around. It's called the Progressive Era. A lot of people decided to rake the muck, and uncover bad things about society. Teddy Roosevelt coined the term muckrakers for this group. They attacked issues like racism, unsafe housing and working conditions, and corruption through mediums like journalism, photography, and cartoons. Remember Boss Tweed? This cartoonist named Thomas Nast brought him down. People living in tenements were photographed by this guy named Jacob Reice. One of the most important muckrakers was Jane Addams, who ran a place called Hull House, which helped poor people and single mothers who needed support. Webb Dubois started the NAACP, which stands for National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. These people helped to make America a better place during this time. Also, during this time, there was a war. A Spanish war. A Spanish-American war. 
It was also called the Splendid Little War, because it was literally only four months. The president during this war was William McKinley. And Teddy Roosevelt was his vice president. Teddy went to war with a group of people called the Rough Riders. When he came home from the war, McKinley was shot, <coughs> which means he was president. Also in the background, Europe was scrambling for Africa. It's now 1900. Whoosh. Archduke Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary was assassinated by Gavrilo Princeps of Serbia in June 1914. People were mad about it, so now there's a war. But the US didn't care until this ship got sunk by German submarines. Also we got involved because of this handy dandy telegram. Trench warfare was established, as well as machine guns and mustard gas. The Ottoman Empire, who later became Turkey, were like hey, Armenians. Fuck you. They proceeded to round them up and kill them. What? Sorry, I was still focused on the war. Whoops, they're all dead. <coughs> At the beginning of the war, there was this king who ruled Russia. His name was Nicholas II. There was this other guy too. His name was Lenin. No, not that Lenin. This Lenin. Vladimir Lenin. He started gaining support to overthrow the king. They eventually got rid of the king. That was easy. Now that Lenin's in charge, they have a completely different form of government. By the way, his supporters were called the Bolsheviks. Anyway, the fighting stopped on November 11, 1918. The war officially ended with the signing of the Treaty of Versailles on June 28, 1919. The Germans had to disband their military and pay reparations because the French hated them. But it wasn't Germany's fault, it was Austria's fault. Maybe. The 1920s were kicked off with the passing of the 19th Amendment. Women can vote now. Yay. Technology's getting better really fast. Also, people are buying stuff with credit. Things are being mass produced now, so people can buy things that they couldn't before. Also, there's this new idea that everyone should be equal in the eyes of the government. It's called communism. There's this other idea that the government is bad. It's called anarchism. Both are getting popular among the people, especially immigrants. When things go wrong, people usually point their fingers at immigrants. Also, during the 1920s, you can't drink alcohol. Or can you? Sure, it's illegal, but just hide some in your friend's basement and you'll be just fine. Here comes the Harlem Renaissance. Hear that jazz, and pick up a book from Langston Hughes on your way out. Also, the president got in trouble for being a part of bribes. Almost 450 years after white people got to America, Native Americans were granted citizenship. Finally. J. Edgar Hoover becomes president of the FBI. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. You know that guy Darwin and his theory about evolution? Well, everybody said no. Not true. You'll need Jesus. This got so bad that schools stopped teaching about evolution. But this guy, John T. Scopes taught the theory of evolution at his school, and then he was arrested and put on trial. Did he win? No. Anyways. This book called The Great Gatsby came out by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Also, Charles Lindbergh made his famous flight across the Atlantic Ocean. Yay. His plane was called the Spirit of St. Louis. Amelia Earhart was the first woman to achieve this feat about a year later. The first movie with sound just came out in 1927 called The Jazz Singer. October 24, 1929. Thursday. You see this arrow? This represents the stock market. It has fallen. Whoops. People go to the banks. They say I want to withdraw my money. Some people get lucky, but then they run out, so they shut down. Now everyone's broke. A lot of people lost jobs, because nobody could buy anything, and provide money for workers. The president at this time was Herbert Hoover. The people said, Herbert. Do something. Herbert said, no fam. This group of veterans from World War I said hey. Herbert. 
you said we'd get our bonuses soon. Even though the deadline isn't here yet, we want them now cause we are broke. And Herbert said, no famine sent in the army. No one's ever electing this guy again. Franklin D. Roosevelt was just elected president. The people said, Franklin. Do something. And Franklin said, yeah fam. He founded government agencies to give people jobs. They were known as the alphabet soup agencies. Did they work? Kind of. He did this thing called a bank holiday, where he'd shut down the banks, give them money, and then reopen them. Now it's safe to put your money in. All of these things were part of something called the New Deal. It had three goals. They were to provide relief, to recover the economy, and to reform financial systems. Republicans did not like Franklin, because they thought he was a socialist, but at least he tried to get us out of the depression. Just kidding, what actually got us out of the depression, was World War II. Hitler, the angry mustache man, and his gang of fascist friends invaded various countries, including Ethiopia and Poland. Germany was friends with Japan. China's in the war. And we decided to send some weapons to China. Guess who doesn't like that? Japan. So, on December 7, 1941, they dropped some bombs on Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. The US decided they can't stay out any longer. It was time to join the war. Executive Order No. 9066 put 120,000 Asians into internment camps. Or, just American concentration camps. The slogan Double V was a term that a lot of black people knew because it encapsulated the fight against fascism abroad and racism at home in two words. Albert Einstein emigrated to the US after he knew that Hitler would use his mind for evil. He went to the president and said hey. Hitler's gonna use his mind for evil. Why don't you use my mind for evil instead? Then, they came up with the most powerful bomb known to man. J. Robert Oppenheimer also worked on this project. It was known as the Manhattan Project. It was so secret, not even the vice president knew about it. So, when the vice president became president, because FDR become die, he had to be informed of this top secret project. On June 6, 1944, the US launched an invasion in Normandy, France. A lot of people were killed, and they began to liberate the rest of Europe, that was under Hitler's control. This day is considered VE Day, victory in Europe. Now everyone gets to go home. Except when the US goes home, there's still an enemy on the other side of the ocean. Japan. The US called up Japan, and said hey we want a truce. Japan, who was a little bit crazy, said no fuck you, and went back to killing themselves. The president, Harry Truman, decided they needed to release the bombs on Japan. So, on the 6th and 9th of August, 1945, the US dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, respectively. The 9th is considered VJ Day, and after this, the war was officially over. There was a conference. The Yalta Conference. Harry Truman, Winston Churchill, and Joseph Stalin were there, to discuss what to do with Europe after the war was over. Stalin agreed to fair elections, and to split Germany down the middle, once the war was over. They didn't end up getting fair elections. I wonder why. The US and Russia are having a friendly debate over which economic system is better, and which one has cuties. Except neither of them actually believed they were being honest, so they sent spies. They also stockpiled a shit ton of nuclear weapons. They both realized, if they fought with all their weapons, it would mean the end of the world. So they don't. But nobody knows, if they will slip up, and use one someday. Instead of attacking each other hands on, they attacked through a third party VPN. Other countries. There's a war going on in Korea between the North and South territories. Russia backs the North, the US backs the South. Oh, you want to know who wins? No one wins, then it's on pause forever. After that war, there's another war. It's going on in Vietnam between the North and South territories. Russia backs the North, the US backs the South. Oh, you want to know who wins? 
it's the Soviet Union. Everyone in the US is accused of being communist by this guy. If he decided you were communist, your life is ruined. Have a good day, sir. The last president, who was beloved and praised by many, was just assassinated. <coughs> but there's a new Beatles record if you're interested. Remember Double V. The black people finally decided to act on it. They said, hey. Fuck you. When they got back from the war, instead of being treated as equal, they were being discriminated against. Again. This woman named Claudette Calvin sat on a bus, and then people got mad at where she sat. Did she move? No. The NAACP didn't want her to be the face of the movement. Because she was too dark and too young, so they got Rosa Parks to do the same thing, but hers was staged. This guy with a mustache named Martin Luther King made some speeches and helped lead the movement. This other guy named Malcolm X also helped lead the movement. H. Rap Brown and Angela Davis were both outspoken about violent means of protest. Angela Davis was on the FBI top 10 watch list. The US and Russia both wanted to exceed each other in technology, so they went to space. Russia put the first man in space, but the US put the first man on the moon. Also, the US just discovered some missiles in Cuba. Fuck. They're from the Soviet Union. Double fuck. This lady named Margaret Sanger basically invented Planned Parenthood. She invented birth control in the 1960s and founded the American Reproductive Rights Movement. The book that started the feminist movement in the 1970s was called The Feminine Mystique by Betty Friedan. The Equal Rights Amendment was written by Alice Paul. It kinda lost traction until the 1970s, when people started pushing for its ratification. It almost made it, until this bitch, Phyllis Schlafly, started convincing people that women didn't want it to be ratified. Nice job, asshole. There's a scandal. The Nixon administration kept trying to cover up that they were part of a break-in. To an important building. It broke his reputation, and then he resigned. It's called the Watergate scandal due to the name of the office building. In 1981, the first female Supreme Court Justice was appointed. Her name is Sandra Day O'Connor. Hey, remember that gay friend from down the street? He's dead now, because of this awesome new disease called AIDS. Being gay is now a death sentence. Have fun with that. The Berlin Wall fell, which signaled that the Cold War was coming to an end. And coming to an end it was. The USSR disbanded in 1991, and then the Cold War ended. Remember racism? Yeah, it's still happening. This guy named Rodney King got beat up. And someone recorded it. That's the first time that's happened. Then they send it to news stations and they ran it. People rioted for days after this, and those riots got very intense. The current president just got into a scandal. This Justin, the president has just fucked one of his interns. He literally told us he didn't, and then he did. He got come on address and now everyone hates him. Iraq invaded Kuwait. And the US didn't like that, so they set up shop in Saudi Arabia, which is near Iraq and Kuwait. Guess who didn't like that? Osama bin Laden. He became the leader of this terrorist group called Al-Qaeda. They decided it would be fun and harmless to crash some planes into important buildings. After this, we invaded Afghanistan in search of Osama bin Laden. And we went to war with Iraq. Whoops, the economy just crashed. Again. It wasn't as bad as last time, but... No, it's still pretty bad. People with houses, don't have houses anymore. Yay. The first black president was just elected. That's pretty cool. He was elected twice, which really goes to show that we've moved on from our racist ways. Wait a second, let me check that. Um, no. No, we are still pretty don racist. We can elect a black man as president. Sure. That's easy. But can we elect a woman? Sure. Hillary Clinton's running. Guess who's on the opposing side? Donald Trump. Wait, the guy from The Apprentice? The guy from Home Alone 2? 
the guy who doesn't know anything about politics? Yup, that's the one. Who won? Well, obviously Hillary Cleo shit. Fuck the electoral college. The people decided that he was a bad man, so they impeached him. Was it successful? No. The people then decided that he was a bad man, so they impeached him again. Was it successful? No. Oopsie whoopsie, there's a new virus from China. Don't worry, it's only in China, it won't go anywhere. There's a pandemic now. Hopefully the president will handle it well. Hey, remember Rodney King? Well, that kinda stuff is still happening. This guy also got beaten by police officers. Except they choked him and he died. Now there are protests everywhere. These protests were peaceful, but were attacked by police with tear gas. Yay. Another election? This time it's Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. Who wins? Joe Biden, very narrowly. And the world is so happy that celebrations happen in various places. Remember that coronavirus disease? They finally made a vaccine. That's what everybody wanted, right? Right? Some crazy bitches had an insurrection because Joe Biden was elected president. This happened, and then he was inaugurated anyway. The first black Supreme Court justice named Kentaji Brown Jackson was just appointed. And now you're all up to date. The end.